Hollywell Ponds. The ponds were part of an estate of Longfort Manor, which were leased from the Abbey by Oliver St. John. He bought an estate in Longfort from the Abbey and had Fort Paul built in the early 1650s. With the construction of the hall went the creation of an area of extensive parkland in which these ponds appear to have been incorporated. Indications that these ponds were part of Fort Paul Park can be gained from a variety of sources. The earliest by J. Bridges in Circular 720, who says the water rises in a rock or grotto in the park at some distance from the house. Let's go have a look, shall we? Yes. Well, hello, you beautiful lot. Welcome to today's grand episode of Purple Vision. Now, I'm here in Peterborough and we've got Fort Hall just at the top there. But I've actually been sent on a little bit of a mission by my good buddy, Joel. So, you know, the, um, the aquarium guy that I go and do a few fish tanks with. Absolutely love him. I've known him for many years. But he said he came to Peterborough one time and he found this what's known as the Holy Well. Now, I'm from Wellingborough, the town of Wells. So when I see this and I thought, oh, I'm gonna have to go check it out. And then I noticed the bus stop actually stops by the main road and then I can walk through this beautiful park. But just on the other side here should be what's known as the Holy Well. So I thought I'd take you along for the journey and see what we can see. Oh, it's very boggy. Oh, I've got my new wellies. <laughs> Old stone wall. Actually takes about two hours, 15 minutes to get here. It is direct from Wellingborough Church Street. Um, quarter past seven I got on that bus and I think it's about half past nine now. So that's pretty good timing, if you ask me. So it goes through Kettering, Corby, Oundle, and then finally here in Peterborough. So I will eventually be going back to the, I wanna to go to the train station. I wanna go watch some trains because I love trains. But of course, before I do any of that, I've gotta do my job first. And my job is to teach, learn, and create. Oh, love it. Now, I honestly have not a clue where I'm actually going in here. I'm kind of just... Oh, there's a swan. <laughs> right. Ah. Ah, oh, here we go. Lake there, and a lake there. Beautiful, look how clear that water is. Oh. Um, anything on this board first? Watercress oxygenates and removes toxins, shelters, feeds ducks, attracts dragonflies and hoverflies when in flower. What's on the other side? Oh, okay. Please don't wall pull the watercress out. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look at this. I mean, even the little stone bitty here, I like that. Let's have a look. Oh wow, here it is. Bird feeders up. Oh look. Joel, you were right mate. This place is magical. I can feel the energy coming off it. And that I'm guessing is where the spring is. Um, let's have a little look down first. Oh my days. 
beautiful. All natural water. Right, let's uh, have a look in this grate. Now there is a massive story to all of this. Um, I'm just gonna search the place out. I'll make myself comfortable and I'll, I'll tell you the story that I've got. That's pretty connected to this place and why I'm actually here. Oh, wow. Right, bear with me, I'm gonna get my light. A few moments later. Ah, there we go. Let's have a look at you. Oh, wow. Oh, it's still coming out from over in the back corner. Just water just trickling out. Uh, what's this? Uh, the Monk's Cave or Grotto, the ancient monument, grade two, listed with fresh water spring constantly feeding the pool and eight medieval fish ponds. Bats dwell and breed in this cave. Please be quiet. And the boys, actually, I have been told that these bats have moved out of here, so the water was kind of safe to drink. But I'm, I'm not gonna drink the water, obviously. So that's mega. I love that. Oh, wow. I'm here. The Holy Well. Now, another little bit of history about this place is it's got a lot to do with Peterborough Cathedral. Now, I have been looking into a little bit of history of Northampton, and when I went to Rothwell and saw the Rothwell Crypt, the Bone Crypt, it was like um, part of the pilgrimage walk from Peterborough Cathedral to Northampton, where in the 1600s it was like the height of Parliament. I mean, Parliament was held there. It was like supposed to be London, and until some kind of revolution happened. Um, so people used to take the walk from the Peterborough Cathedral, which I've been to, and it looks absolutely amazing. And apparently there is a row of trees that literally lines this holy well place up with the cathedral. So um, when I get five minutes, I will get the drone up and just have a look, see if we can see this line, see if it still exists. Apparently there's only a few trees left of it, but you know, we might be able to see something. Um, right, the main reason why I'm actually here is this place was left to rack and ruin, very much like my cotch space down the bottom of Findon. It was a little area where I went to and kind of cleaned up, made, made a few bridges, cleared off the banks and invited families down to come and enjoy the great outdoors whilst we were going through turmoil in 2021. It was voluntary work. It was under a gentleman's agreement with one side of the landowner. The other landowner was British Stealing Pensions and they really didn't care. I've been on that bit, la bit of land for so long, not made a nuisance. I don't think they can move me off there now. I'll be able to do certain bits. But anyway, um, I had to move away from the cotch because I kind of annoyed a few of the find and farmers. Well, rightly so as well. These find and farmers dumped um, about six ton of manure on an 84 year old man's gate. Now, the hunters of this farmer, they got pretty nasty and started killing a monk jack and hung drawn and quartered quite literally in my trees, well, in the trees down the cotch. So I didn't actually own the cotch. It was more of a just look after it and get everybody here just to come and enjoy the place. And that is exactly what had happened to this place here. A group of volunteers were here and look at the marvelous job they've done. It's absolutely amazing. Even down to putting a few wood bits. I mean, oh, jelly ears. Lovely, but even down to the, the plants, putting the rocks around the edge to create plant borders. And, and this here. So it's, it's lush, even the little bench down there, which I believe has got a little plaque. Let me have a quick look. Oh, I mean, look, even here. Do you know what I mean? Just lining up the borders, keeping things in, making sure there are pathways for people to go and that they don't stand on, stand on them bits. So what we got? Gift from Holy Well Cottages Children. Lovely. You see, even the community got involved. To where these volunteers have been here and they've created these little bits. A little bit like myself down the cotch, I used to have my tools and I needed my tools to carry on working. And if anybody else wanted to come down and kind of chip in with what I was doing, then the tools were there ready available whenever they needed them. Now, 
they probably didn't have that much niceness here so they wanted to put in a shed so they could keep their tools and they put in a planning application to the council which in my eyes is the one where you went wrong you don't ask the authority for help when you're doing things like this the second that you go and ask them for help it's like you've highlighted an area to them that they now must act upon if you don't highlight the area to them then they leave you be and I, I, I personally think that was a bit of a no-no. You shouldn't have done it. You've got loads of little spots up in these hedges where you'll be able to hide your tools and you'll be able to come down. So since this group actually got denied, they've literally put down their arms and they're like, you know what, we've got to carry on with our lives. We're not going to keep pumping you know, our time and effort into this place if we're not going to get no help. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, buck up. It was the same with the cotch. I mean... I get why you've walked away and it's the same reason a little bit like I've walked away from the cotch but I haven't fully walked away I'll always be there it's always in my heart and I'll always go check on it and I'll always report problems and if I ever feel a bit low then I'll go down there and just clear a few bits up but as for rubbish and everything else I mean this is pretty clear compared to the cotch the cotch had so much rubbish lying about where people will come down have parties and they'd leave bits but this is a place of significant importance and to me it's very religious. I'm not a religious man but I do believe in something and the energy that I get from these, I mean this is our holy groundwater coming straight out of the ground. For kids to either paddle in a pool or get a drink for the horses or, or whatever, this is a magical spot. This is the planet giving us our energy and, uh, and this is really religious. A message to the community that have been doing this don't stop don't stop you're on a mission of the soul for everybody to come and enjoy this if you're worried about negative energies coming down here then we know how karma works probably go home go to make themselves a cup of coffee spill the boiling water and scold themselves let karma and let everything else sort itself out but don't let go of what you're doing here i mean even the work that you've done putting in these beds that will last for at least three four possibly five years and if people keep coming and visiting where they're treading these little bits of ground uh yeah i mean maybe the council i mean the council said that they will take back over this bit and they'll do what they're and that, no i don't believe they would but if they were going to do anything then do what you did before in supporting these guys and bring some wood chip in I mean, look, this has all been trampled down now. It, it needs, needs some more. And we know you're chopping down trees left, right and centre. So you might as well get some more down. So. Anyway, well, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to get this drone up now. I'm going to look towards Peterborough Cathedral. Just see if we can see any remainder of this line of trees that Joel mentioned. Um, and also that board inside the uh, cave there, it mentioned that there are eight ancient lakes around here so what I'll do is I'll have a big pan around and we'll have a look but yeah absolutely amazing don't don't stop community it's the same for me Koch is always there and I may have to walk away for five minutes but I'll always be back there because it's my soul it's me and it's for everybody for the power of unity don't you dare stop this is amazing you can feel the energy from it revitalizing me anyway enough of that i'm gonna get this drone up thank you for watching like and subscribe if you can if not it, I'm, I'm not that bothered i'm just glad you're watching getting to see this so let's get this drone up in order to understand what, what the self is you have to remember that it doesn't need to remember anything just like you don't need to know how you work in thyroid man. everlasting non-existence because that's not an experience. A lot of people are afraid that when they die they're going to be locked up in a dark room forever.